No brain, no pain. Think about it. Pet Cemetery 2. Hello everybody, my name is Mr. Hat, and today we're going over Pet Cemetery 2. Came out in 1992 and it stars Clancy Brown and Justin Furlong. Whatever the hell happened to him? He was in Terminator 2 the same exact year as this movie. And now, where is he? I hear he's kind of a dick in person. He's one of those child actors that kind of just like disappears off the face of the earth and then you see him later on in some kind of article about how they're on drugs. That seems to happen to a lot of child actors. They just get famous so quick and they start taking heroin and then they're just gone. Look at Macaulay Culkin. What the fuck happened to him? But anyways, Pet Cemetery 2 is just like the first one. It's directed by Mary Lamper who directed the first one except this one is completely different in tone. But it has the same premise. A dog dies and they have to bury it and it comes back and it's... Not the same. This is the first time I've seen this movie and I didn't even know that there was a sequel to this film to the first one until like a year or two ago. I had heard going into it that it was zany and different compared to the first one so therefore I was able to set my expectations a little lower and that's probably what helped me enjoy this. This will be going into spoiler territory so if you just want to know real quick right now is it even worth watching if you like the first one and you love the first one you probably will be disappointed in this one. But if you are a fan of zaniness and just over the top, like acting and just weirdness, then this might be your thing. But before we go into my pros, let's go into my negatives because everybody loves to hear me rant. First up, the acting is bad. Justin Furlong, just like in Terminator 2, he is not good here. Pet Cemetery is the kind of movie that requires a lot of emotion, especially when there's just your mom's dying. Just like in the first Pet Cemetery, there was so much emotion and grief and you felt it. It's a painful movie to get through. Whereas this one, you got some of the same stuff going on, but it's nowhere near as emotional. In fact, there's almost no emotion. The movie opens with Justin Furlong's mom dying and we just met these people so therefore I don't get their chemistry together. I'm just supposed to be sad because that's his mom. Yes it would suck to see your mom die but there's not much of an impact there because I don't know them. And we never even see Justin Furlong's character Jeff cry about it. He just screams no and then that's the end of it. Even when you get to the funeral, he, we don't get to see him cry. He just bends down below frame and other people, paparazzi, are taking pictures. So that is just a negative because it's not on the same, it's not on par with the first one where it's all those emotions and it, it just hits at home and it makes you think about death. This movie makes you think about nothing. But I will give credit where credit is due. I think it's Great that they did their own thing. This one does stand out. And I'm, hey, do a different thing. Try to make it stand out. Good for you. But it just didn't work that well for me. Now, the second big thing is the writing in this movie. And that's going to basically be the thing behind the rest of the shit I'm going to say. It all leads back to bad writing. I felt that the way that they lured Jeff to the pet cemetery was just lazy. The way he's lured there is because of a bully. And every Stephen King movie has to have a major bully and holy crap this guy is a dick. And why is he mean to him? Well because his mom died. It's, it reminded me of like Halloween 4 when all those kids are like, Jamie's mommy's a mummy. Jamie's an orphan. This guy is on that level except worse. So for for some reason, Jeff takes this little kitten that he just found to school, gets away with it somehow, and then Je uh, the bully takes that cat, runs off with it to the pet cemetery so he can tell him the story about the pet cemetery. And But they're on this bicycle chase to that cemetery, and Justin Furlong, aka Jeff, is not that far behind. But as soon as he gets there, the bully somehow had time to go like half a mile into the woods to the pet cemetery to lock the cat in the cage and then walk all the way back to meet Jeff, and who was somehow way far further behind than I realized. Did I miss something? Then we meet this nanny, and she's only in here to be because they're like, well, the first movie had a nanny, so let's just have another one here. Except she's not here for comic relief. She's here as cannon fodder. She has probably five lines in the whole movie, and you always forget she's there because she'll pop up, like, here and then here just to die. And like, wait, who? Oh, that's right. There's a nanny. At first, it's kind of like, okay, is there a love interest between the dad and his new woman? And... The kid's gonna have beef with her because he sees his dad falling for a new woman so quick and it's gonna be like jealousy, like, you know, don't replace mom yet. It almost seems like they were going for that and they cut a bunch of shit out of the movie because there's this one scene where Jeff is just a complete dick to her. He gets home from school after being bullied and he says, you know, it was a bad day and she's like, ah, oh, first days at school are usually bad. It's okay. And she's trying to be all nice. And Jeff's like, you're not my mom. What a cock. Then we meet Gus, who's my favorite character, played by Clancy Brown, a.k.a. Mr. Krabs, a.k.a. 
Dr. Cortex. His laugh in this movie almost reminds me of Cortex's laugh, so it really brings a lot of nostalgia. Even though I've never seen this movie, it just makes me think of uh, Crash Bandicoot, so bonus points for that alone. <laughs> But he really is the lifesaver of this movie. He is the thing that is just, he steals the scene, he makes it entertaining because he's over the top. But he is a dick. The first thing, like, it's weird because his character, when you first see him, he's at this funeral. I'm pretty sure that was him and he's being nice. He's letting Justin Furlong more and he's taking the paparazzis away. And I forgot to leave, I left this detail out. Uh, Jeff's mom is a Emmy winning actress and she dies on set of this horrible obviously low budget or poorly made movie they have no safety concerns whatsoever and his mom gets electrocuted in front of him but he's at the funeral getting the paparazzis away so that he can mourn so it's like oh that's a good d and then the rest of the film he's like a complete dick but he goes to jeff's dad's place of work he's a veterinarian and jeff's there with this little kitten and uh, gus comes in with his dog and he's talking to jeff who just lost his mom and his dad who just lost his ex-wife, I guess. They separated. Basically, the first thing he says to them is, I used to fuck your mom. But then to get the story going and to get the pet cemetery thing to kick in and be a part of the plot, we have to have an animal die, right? Well, how do we get this animal to die? Well, there's 50 ways you can do it, plus a whole shit ton of ways. But it goes for this over-the-top, unrealistic way of, well, let's just have... Gus overreacts like no one would. Everything's over the top. This reaction, over the top. Okay, Gus shoots his dog because it's barking. But it's barking while he's trying to have sex. You don't interrupt Gus when he's trying to get laid. So right then and there, you're like, oh god, this guy needs to die now. He's shooting dogs for barking. His own fucking family dog. And what kills me is the wife comes out like less than 10 seconds after he shoots the dog. And it's just like... What did you do? And then that's the end of that. Like, there's, it doesn't get brought up again. She doesn't leave him immediately. And this whole film, everything from this point on, is because of her. It's all her fault. If she had seen what a dick Gus was sooner, she could have just left his ass, and none of this would have happened. Even if she had, like, left right then and there, the son never would have had time to, like, bury the dog in the pet cemetery. She just could have moved his ass out of there and it still never would have happened. So it's the mom's fault. This movie takes place in Maine. So does that mean that that movie set at the beginning was in Maine? Because I thought they were in LA. And if that's true, how the fuck was the sheriff in Maine in LA? Point, explain that to me. This movie was made in 92. So we got this like early 90s, late 80s rock soundtrack played throughout the whole movie. And it just doesn't fit. So Jeff automatically becomes friends with this kid, Drew, who watched him get his ass kicked, and I don't know why he was there. Drew follows these bullies to the pet cemetery and then watches them kick Jeff's ass. If you weren't going there to protect Jeff and you weren't going there to join the bullies and kicking his ass, why were you there? Just to be a spectator? But they, pro I think they have like a one, like a little one minute conversation on that day. I don't know what else was done that day with their friendship, how it built that day. But the next day, when Drew's dog's dead, Jeff's automatically on board with like, yeah, I'll go help you bury a dog guy I just fucking met and probably had a one hour conversation with. There's no chemistry between them that led to that. Like, you're just gonna help him bury his dead dog, your friends, that much? There's not much character building in this movie at all. Then we find out from this bully who I don't trust, I don't know his sources, but he says that Ellie, the survivor, the little girl in the first movie, killed her grandparents with like a saw and then went to a mental institution. That could be true, but coming from this guy, I do not trust that story. As if Gus wasn't a big enough dick, he flat out punches his 13-year-old son in the face. Not his son, his stepson. Still doesn't make it okay. And then goes to try to beat the shit out of him with a giant wooden cross that was at the cemetery. But then the dog, you know, steps in and kills him. And then when Gus dies by the evil dog, they... Jeff and Drew are like, oh my god, what are we going to do? What are we gonna? Let's go bury him in the pet cemetery and bring him back. You're going to bring back that evil piece of shit who killed your dog, beat you up, and is nothing but trouble. Why? Tell me why. Because you think you're going to be pinned for the murder you did not commit? He was killed naturally by nature. Animals did it. 
say that. It's the truth. Stupid decision. Why the fuck bring him back? Then we get these like random dream sequences and like the father has one, the son has one, and every time it has like the dog involved with like a dog head and you get like all these moments of like a, like the dog but it's clearly a puppet, like a puppet head. The way it's like cropped, you can tell it's clearly fake and there's a hand behind it. How come the dog has red eyes when it comes back from the pet cemetery, but Gus doesn't? Explain that one. But those dream sequences, they make no sense and they're unnecessary. Why is it the father and the son are having similar dreams? And then when they wake up, it's like the dream's actually kind of happening. And there's moments where it's like, okay, is this a dream? Or is it not? Like, I, it's dumb. You don't need dream sequences in this movie. You just don't. When they bring back Gus, at first he's actually nicer. And that's just wasted potential for something that could have been better. They could have just made him more evil. When they buried him, I thought he was going to come back and murder Drew in his sleep brutally. The shit he was doing to Drew as a living person was already evil. So I was expecting a, a lot more carnage from him when he came back. But instead, he's like making pancakes and saying, no, son, you're not grounded. No, you can go hang out with your best friend. And then on a weird flip, he just flips at some point and just like tries and immediately kills his family. But it's just like random. It's completely random. What made him turn? He just came back all nice and was defending Justin from a bully. And then he's like, okay, is he nice? And then all of a sudden, he's just evil. They could have made him like come back and like abuse his sheriff powers. I was like, okay, he's the sheriff. Is that going to come into play in the story? Nope. He could have came back and like pulled a bunch of people over, killed them, buried them, and make a whole army of assholes behind them. The dad going to the vet scene was not needed. Like, it was just reconfirmation of shit he already knew. I like how the dad lets his son spend the night at Drew's house after he just saw what damage the dog did. The dog escaped the kennel. He's been told that it's dead. So there's some crazy paranormal shit going on. So he knows the dog's back from the grave. He knows that it just murdered and butchered a whole group of kittens and was somehow able to chew its way out of a metal bar cage. So he knows there's a violent animal out there and he knows it's Drew's. So it might be going back to Drew's house. And he's like, yeah, son, go spend the night at Drew's house. But let me know if you see a dog. Fucking idiot. You don't think the dog might show up there and like kill your son? Like you see how dangerous that thing is. You're irresponsible. When Gus kills the wife and son Drew, they had so much time to avoid that head-on collision. Like he like he rams them and they go in the other lane in the opposite tra tra traffic and the, the big old potato truck just crashes into them. That could have been done so much better, shot better, but instead they made it look like they had all this time in the world. Hit the brakes, Go this way, go that way, but instead they just crash and now they're dead. Once again, just another quick, uneventful, no impact death. Like, it was like, really? Alright, that's the end of them. I don't care. And then why didn't Gus bury them too? Like, he buried the bully he killed, but he didn't bury those two. So I was like, why not? But then once the bully does come back after being killed, and I'll get to that in my pauses, but when he comes back and Jeff electrocutes him, he's on top of him. Why isn't he being electrocuted too? That's how electric electricity works. If someone's being electrocuted, they always tell you, don't touch them because you'll just be electrocuted too. Gus brings back Jeff's mom, and I think Jeff gave him permission. That's what he wanted. But then, like, the mom wants to kill Jeff and the dad, I suppose, because she just randomly sets the house on fire in the attic. They're like upstairs in the attic. She shut, she locks the door, breaks the doorknob off, off, and then she like sets the house on fire. And I was like, why is she doing this? Is she trying to kill them? It just felt random. And it didn't work because they easily just break out of there. And then when they're like leaving, she does nothing to stop them. She doesn't try to kill them at all. They, her only attempt at murdering them was to set the house on fire. And then when they're Clearly walking out to safety, she doesn't try to stop them. She's like, oh, I'm just going to sit up here and melt and burn to death. And then this movie does this weird, like, showcasing all the people who died. It's like a little kill count at the end. Like, there's, like, a shot of the car going down this road. It's a very long shot. And to the right, there's, like, it just these faces keep popping up of all the people who died. And it's like, that's just random. It's weird. All right, now let's go over the little things I did like. Okay. First up, we got a couple of familiar faces. We got Clancy Brown and Justin Furlong, but Justin Furlong is not good in this movie. But Clancy Brown, he is the best thing in here. He's got all the one-liners and the funny moments. 
the no brain, no pain. And then you got the, him talking about banging Jeff's mom in front of Jeff after his mom just died. <laughs> and then when the dad goes to confront Gus, Clancy Brown, about, you know, why'd you dig up my wife? And Gus is like, because <laughs> I wanted to fuck her. He just steals the show, and he is the best thing about this movie. He is the only entertainment you'll get from this film is his character alone. Yes, he's a complete fucking dick, but you can't help but like him once he's a zombie. Like, his human character is just over the top, and he is a complete unrealistic dick. No one's that bad. But when he's a a zombie-like version of himself, technically not a zombie movie, but kind of is. It's a debate. But I'll just call him Zombie Gus. When he's Zombie Gus... He is awesome. I like that the pet cemetery and the burial ground, it kind of looks like the first movie, a little different, but there's some continuity there, and I like that they bring up the creeds and they drive by the creed house. The creed house is still there, looks similar, and they bring up the creeds quite a few times, more than what I was expecting. This movie opens up with a movie within a movie. I thought New Nightmare was the first to do that. I guess not. This came out before. This movie is bloodier than the first one, but... Overall, I will say that the first one has the best on-screen kill compared to this one because they're like off-screen. You got like an electrocution with the head blowing up. That's off-screen. It's a lot of off-screen stuff, but the ones that are on-screen is bunnies being skinned. We see bunnies being skinned, and we see bunny sex. We also get some boobs in a very unnecessary dream sequence, but hey, I'll take them. And then we get the happy birthday to me, Def. And what's funny is... You know, when his scarf goes his scarf goes in, just like Happy Birthday to Me. But earlier in the movie, when I saw him riding that motorbike, and he had this long-ass scarf on, I was like, well, that's dangerous. So therefore, I couldn't help but laugh when that was used to kill him later on. I was like, ha, I was right. See, it is dangerous. What are you doing, man? I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> Stop it, man! <laughs> but yeah, you, just, you want to see him die, and when he dies, it's almost satisfying but not satisfying because it's off camera but you do get to kind of see like the after effects of it the aftermath of it but kind of like from far away i don't know it's i wish more shit would have been shown maybe it's a lack of budget or what they were going for but i wish we could have seen more on screen and kind of like what i said way earlier is that i appreciate this movie's going for a different tone although i will say that the tone is kind of tonally deaf like it there's zaniness here and there with Clancy Brown's character, and but really that's it. Like the other characters, everything around them is kind of like serious. It's a serious situation, but it's just poorly written, and you got the, the zaniness of Clancy Brown. I do appreciate the realism of this one particular scene, and that's when the dad, like he has a six shooter, and he puts one bullet in, and he does he doesn't line it up properly. He just kind of like spins it, and he's like shooting at Gus. And it takes like four clicks until it finally gets him. That's real. And then I like that he reloads it and he shoots Gus like four more times off screen to make sure he's fucking dead. We need more of that in horror. But overall, I will say that I wasn't all that entertained. But Clancy Brown was definitely the best thing about this movie. It's not terrible. I do prefer this one kind of more than the remake because of the zaniness. And I can have a little bit more fun with it. But overall, I'll say maybe when it comes to Pet Cemetery 2, maybe just rent this one at Redbox. And those are my thoughts on Pet Cemetery 2. Do you like the zaniness of this one? Do you prefer over the first one that's more serious? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Hit this like button over here. Or over here, I always point in the wrong spot. And you can follow me on social media to keep up with me and my life. And you can become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about 5 seconds to see more. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Yeah.